This is John Walton, and you're listening to the Power Play Point Podcast with the Blue Lighter on Point and Anna Knox. Here's Wilson, and on the right circle, they score! Welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point, talking to you live to tape from downtown Glen Burnie, Maryland, on a, a lightning uh, midwinter's eve. Uh, is actually Saturday, Saturday, January the 7th. Uh, so we're recording a day early because the schedule makers have decided to conveniently make a game right smack in the middle of of our usual recording schedule Sunday evening, tomorrow at five. And I'm sure they did it strictly to inconvenience me, myself and I, ha ha ha. I'm sure they did that, yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, But uh, yeah, we got a few games to go through. It's another good week for the Caps. Uh, So if you're listening, you on the other side of the speakers, the earbuds, what have you. Um, Great week again to be a Caps fan, mostly. Uh, Some good games. And with us uh, once again, Hopefully, fully recovered from last uh, from the injury that we discussed in great detail. The one and only mermaid, live herself from Centerville, Virginia, Anna Knox. Yes, happy Saturday, Gil. Happy Saturday, you can do this. mermaid, Anna. And yeah. uh, how, how you <laughs> and doing ha- this season? I have, re- I have recovered. I thought you were going to say if you recovered from your New Year's um, recording hangover, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Um, it was a spirited episode. We're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> yes, yes, I, yes. It 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 most definitely was. And um, and you know, I I miss the I miss our first season, Gail, a couple of years ago when when we were trashed on that New Year's Eve show, and I'm I'm sure it's it's been archived and it'll bite in the ass eventually. But that was good times. So well, next I, time I'm uh, next time you're going to have to join me in in the um, in the in the liquid truth. Yeah, yeah, that that might have to be. We might have to <clears throat> bring back the uh, the drunk podcast again. I think, but so. yeah, I, least, I decided to go the other just, way. You did. You like when like the hyper caffeinated way, which is yeah. which I totally respect. Like no worries on that. But uh, but yeah, but no, it was uh, my my ear is uh, <laughs> fine, thankfully. Although the students are fascinated by it, but I think that they thought over break it might like be amputated or something so like oh wait you still have an ear i'm like god what did you go home and tell your parents but uh yes i'm good i can still hear uh and i'm looking forward to talking about this week because i have so many i do i have so many questions and i'm so excited for our two special people on today awesome 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 and uh, yes So uh, before we get to what exactly Anna is talking about, uh, Anna, I just uh, th- speaking of the amputation, I just w- just want to say I'm glad you didn't go with that because I hear the Van Gogh look is out. Oh, uh, it is. <laughs> it is. It doesn't look good on anybody. Yeah. Um, God, anyway. On, how long have you been sitting on that one, girl? Uh, all of 15 seconds. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to say I call bullshit on that one because you've been sitting on like, yeah. how can I make an ear? <laughs> yeah. The, as soon as I sent the picture, he was like, yeah. Ugh, what yep. can I do? Where's my dad joke uh, file? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I, I, no, I assure yeah. you, I've, you, you can disbelieve me all you want, but uh, I just actually came up with that. But that's fine. No need to get into uh, too deep an argument about it so uh as as anna mentioned we have uh not one but two very special guests this evening for this edition of the podcast uh one of one of them uh you've been hearing for a little bit for the past minute or so uh so i'll go ahead and introduce her now um i i'm a i'm a bit embarrassed because of when you bec- when you came on i didn't bother to ask your last name at all unfortunately we're already on a first name basis that's how much we uh, <laughs> uh are familiar here but um 
It's um, all right. I, but, I'm kind of, I kind of have a Madonna vibe to me anyway. So it's like, it'll work out. It'll be fine. That works. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Becca and um, yeah. you, uh, you are a, a mutual friend through uh, Anna. So uh, as we always mm -hmm. do like for you to come on first and um, tell your story about how you became a, a Caps fan. Well, first of all, where are you calling from this evening? So I am calling from Fun Facts, Virginia, also known as Fairfax, um, mm -hmm. where I've resided since uh, 1983. We've been here. So. Okay. That's and what the, do you do? What do you do for the almighty paycheck? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I, that's kind of how I met Anna. I am a, I'm an architect and a designer. Um, and I helped Anna with her um, ki uh, kitchen remodel. That's almost done. Yeah. So we're excited. Um, highly, highly and, right. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Anna. Um, but my name is, uh, my full name is Becca, and it's Weigel, W-I-Y-G-U-L. They're another local business. Um, not what I do, but something else. And then I am um, Mezny, M-E-Z-N-Y, Mezny Group. Very, very good. And and as speaking of uh, local businesses, as we discussed, uh, we will definitely have you on to plug yours at, at a later date. Um, yep. So, uh, okay, so how was it that you became a Washington Capitals fan? Okay, so the sports I grew up following were football and basketball, um, uh, specifically um, professional football and college uh, basketball. Um, so I was not introduced to the Caps until my 20s when I was falling in love <laughs> with my now husband, <laughs> Um, he, we started dating the sum, my last summer of college. So I came home from college and we were dating and then I went, um, back to school for my fifth year. Um, and when I came home for, I think it was Thanksgiving break, um, he was surprising me with a, with a date that he wouldn't tell me where we were going and he took me to a Caps game and, uh, um, mm -hmm. it was awesome. The deal. Yeah, I pretty much did because I was <laughs> the thing about the thing that sealed it was the caps was I love I love um I loved the energy I loved the stadium I loved all the things and Ovechkin was like I don't know if he was new this is in two thousand and two is that right Mike two thousand and two I think and so I don't remember when Ovechkin got here but um it was just a very exciting time to become a Caps fan right so um um. So I was like, you know, and then when I saw the playoff games that following playoffs and I saw how fast it can fast of a game it can be, I'm in, I'm into fast. Like it, mm -hmm. football can bore me. So basketball is like my speed. It, it, it goes at a good pace. Um, so when I saw how fast the playoffs can play, I was I was hooked. So. The world's hopefully that helps. world's fastest team sport as uh, the, the great Ron Weber used to. Uh, call it in his intros as uh, the former radio voice of the Capitals. All right. That that's okay. awesome. So, so uh, uh, like, like a, like a lot of our listeners and a lot of Caps fans in general, uh, you can date your start of things back to, uh, well, the beginning of uh, the Ovechkin era and maybe before it so sounds about right. Um, yes, exactly. Okay. That's great. That that's just great. Now, uh, just to throw in some perspective, uh, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I've been around uh, quite a bit before that, but uh, I definitely appreciate what Ovechkin has done for the team in both hockey in the DMV. He certainly put it uh, on the map for a lot of people. So the more the merrier, I say. So that that's great. Great to have you on. I uh, can't wait to hear your opinions of uh, the team in general and what's gone on this whole week. And our second guest this evening, um, I scheduled him because uh, he signaled an interest in, uh, he's actually uh, owns his own uh, business, which we will get to in greater detail uh, towards the end of this episode. Um, so it's, uh, Pat Kirchner is, 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 uh, am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, I'll lay, I'll lay a venture as to what business he's in just by allowing, uh, you on the, uh, the, whatever devices you're listening to, uh, listening to, uh, this, this gentleman's, uh, lovely, lovely voice. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, so, uh, where are you calling us from this evening, Pat? I am calling you from lovely Woodbridge, Virginia. Woodbridge, a yeah, nice part of nice part of the area, and um, 
I don't know who has the worst commute to games, Anna or me. Right. 66 or 95. Take your, mm. yeah, pick your poison. They suck. <laughs> they, I, and taking, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I always take the Metro. You do. You know, we, know did, you we did for a while, but it, it's it, it, by the time we get to Springfield and get on the Metro, I mean, that gets us home at the end of the end of the night, a half an hour later. And we've spent just yeah. as much when you consider parking and everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's yeah. true. Um, you got to get the, the spot hero app and then get yourself a, like a $20 um, parking space a block away. And then yeah. you're good to go. It's like 12 yeah. bucks, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you where we park. Cause uh, well, we don't want to that's, fill up. <laughs> that's two or three blocks. That's like two yeah. or three blocks away. I think. In the secret <laughs> agent territory there. And we're, we're on a first name basis with the parking attendant. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Hey, there you go. There yeah. you go. Nice. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hide your occupation till the end, of course, since uh, you are our spotlight as far as that goes. So uh, Pat, how did you get started as a fan of our Washington Capitals? I uh, I grew up in Detroit watching the Red Wings, and um, my mom was a huge Red Kelly fan. That's mm-hmm. that's reaching way back. I I know that name very well. Yeah. Um. So grew up grew up watching watching a little bit of Gordie Howe. I'm not that old. Um. And you know I would even so I how I ended up here is uh, uh, I enlisted in the Marine Corps. Uh, after high school, they sent me all over the world, uh, and I kept coming back to this area. And uh, I've got a brother in the area. My wife's got a brother in the area. And so um, uh, when we both retired from the military, um, we just decided to stay here. But before that, uh, let's see, we came back from Japan in 2009, had orders to the Pentagon, and um, I took her to a hockey game. She had been to one game in high school and took her to that game and she fell in love with with the sport. So um, we bought a um, we actually the first year we bought a split package with five Wizards games and five um, five Capitals games. And she's a she's a big Spurs fan uh, because she she went to high school in San Antonio so that was actually the only Wizards game we went to because I've I've got no love for pro basketball, uh, college basketball. Yeah, but uh, anyways, I digress. We um, we then went and and got a ten game caps package the next year. Had to go down to North Carolina for uh, for a command tour, and then when I came back, um, we we pulled the trigger and and ten years ago, yeah, this was our tenth year. Next year will be our tenth year oh. of uh, full season ticket holders. So we, we got to ride the uh, the rise of Ovechkin. Got to see the got to see the Stanley Cup playoffs and uh, and see the Caps win the Cup, which was which was a pure joy. Um, yeah. And then we've we just continued to go to the games, and we probably hit I don't know between the thirty five and forty of all the all the home games. We're at almost every game unless uh, something takes us out of town. That's right, very cool. Right. Can can I ask where your seats are, or what section? Yeah, I was gonna ask the same thing. Yeah, uh, one hundred and four, uh, about oh. halfway up, so over the goalie's Holy left crap. shoulder. Yeah, no, that's if you're out of town, and... you need to call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're to become best friends. No, I. The reason why I'm asking is because my um my husband has a friend that is also a season ticket holder and. That was my surprise gift for Christmas. He said, oh, you know, I didn't really get you anything. We're we're doing this big kitchen <laughs> project <laughs> and and what and I was like, Oh, that's that's totally fine. You know, it's, it's no worries. Well then I got this manila envelope and I opened it up and, and he uh went ahead and got two tickets for the uh Penn's game on the twenty sixth. And it's in section one oh eight. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is just like, anytime there's like a one or, you know, I was like, that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. So um, that's where I'll, I will be on. I know I know Becca already has exciting plans that day, but I know that we will be there on the 20 on the 26th. So that's you know, great. What, I'm happy what, for you. And, and I love the fact that your wife has jumped on board with it as well. 
Yeah, what yeah. we really like about that end, you know, is we're Caps attack twice, and yeah, we've had oh, the yeah. we have the same seatmates, um, you know, for the last for the last nine years now. Um, and they're, just, they're just wonderful people. That's great. That's so, great. That's well, very awesome. cool. Well, we'll see if we can uh, pass in that you know concession stand and and give a toast to each other to be like, hey, thanks. For <laughs> we'll we'll meet. Show. We'll meet up at the at the former FTX corner. Up at the, there we go. <laughs> the top. Oh. There we go. <laughs> very, that very nice. Was, that thing was gone in a day. <laughs> now it's the Bud Light corner. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. So awesome. All right, Gail. I know you, you, um, I don't know. Are you, I don't know. Are we excited about this last week of, of scores? Or are we just very, kind of. Very, very good and insightful question. Um, right now, off the top of my head, I'd have to say yes and no. Um, yeah. So it, the on ice action. Um, well, OK, so one regulation win, one mm -hmm. uh, overtime loss and one regulation loss. So one, one and one. Um, one on one on one. I want to play that game to whoops. Sorry. I fell into another reference. Um, <laughs> God. Um, I, Are we going all it, the way back to New Year's Eve day or no? No. Okay. So the, so the three game. The okay. So when last, when last we spoke, uh, the uh, the last game we covered was uh, the monster game um, New right. Year's Eve, uh, where the Caps bombed the Canadians uh, nine yep. to two. Um, so the last yep. game, so so the three games we're going to cover are uh, this past Tuesday against Buffalo, uh, the one on Thursday against the Blue Jackets, and the one last night against the. Nashville Predators. Let's go ahead and start with the so conveniently enough, we're going to make our focus game the one last night against the Predators. Um, I, I saw a few things that I didn't really care for that I want to go over in greater detail. So let's uh, skip through the uh, that first game, the Sabres. Um, OK, so actually all well, the, the first two games kind of fell into the same pattern, I think, which is why I'm glossing over them. Mm -hmm. schizophrenically slow start um bordering <laughs> on lethargic and i don't care uh for at mm -hmm. least the first 10 minutes um uh, in mm -hmm. each um and then they woke up in the second and you know one happened to be a win one happened to be not a win almost a win um so the sabers game uh yeah it started off real real slow they fell behind i i, th I didn't think they realized how what kind of firepower buffalo has um but if they didn't know they know now that's for damn sure um alex tuck with a goal and tage thompson with a hat trick yeah in, in this one um now fortunately the captain captain ovechkin carried the team in this one Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they kept pace at least, but it all comes down. And this is why I don't like when the team goes into overtime, because it usually comes down to one mistake with that much open ice and lo and behold, it happened. Now, depending on what side of the rock, the red spectrum you're on, this thing was either, uh, Darcy Kemper's fault or Lars Ellers's fault. Uh, you could pretty much blame the whole damn team because they could have there were times they could have put this thing away and and didn't as many times as they as they tied the thing but it just comes down to that slow start and and that mistake in the end they just bottom line they didn't put themselves in a position to win and yeah when when you leave it up to one play that could make you or break you this is what happens and uh, now from my vantage point i think based on the umpteen times I saw the replay, Lars Eller could have played the puck a lot better. He Absolutely. could have communicated with his goalie a lot better on it. Um, you have that much open ice and you've got Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck both bearing down on you. You mm -hmm. damn sure better know what you're doing with the puck. And yeah, it, it just mm -hmm. didn't happen. And fortunately or unfortunately, it comes down to Eller's on the ice because right now, yes, I acknowledge he's our best face-off man, but I can think of five or six people I'd rather have on the ice in, in three on three overtime, but yeah, th that's, that's just the way it goes. That that's how I saw it. Um, Anna, what, 
you're you're you sound like you're about ready to burst. So go go yeah, ahead. No 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 no. <laughs> I'm um that, well you know what I, I can just say I went into this game feeling um you know because we all know like my my sports nerd side um I balled during the NFL Buffalo um game with the, with um the players and collapsing and, and everything it was very hardcore and then to know that the that the nhl saber like the buffalo sabers were coming in with the number three jerseys i was very heavy-hearted and what i was just kind of like ah oh, this is you know this is tough it's like kind of rock the sports world for a little bit um but i do think a lot of fans um and probably you gotta put myself in this loop myself included um underestimated the sabers this year i will i will say that i we definitely definitely Mm -hmm. underestimated um their their skills their speed and and everything else they outplayed the caps in this in the 60 minutes aspect of it um Mm -hmm. and i am gonna put i am gonna put i don't usually you know point out blame as much as i have uh unless it's God, Orloff. But on this one, I am going to put it on Tiger. I'm going to put it on him because, yeah, that was very, 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 very frustrating to see. On the flip side, I will say the faceoff percentage has been outstanding, and the minutes in the in the sin bin have been low. That to me is like uh-huh. huge improvements from what we were seeing um, previously. So face-off percentage, you know, for me has been, is that's been a big deal. And it sounds like they've been doing drill after drill after drill um, in practice, probably to the point of hating it so much, but you know what, that's what you got to do to get shit that's done. So I was, yeah. So totally happy with that. Not putting on Kemper, putting on Eller, but definitely think the whole team as a whole minus the ice issue. Uh, they, they underestimated this Buffalo team. I'm sorry. Give me a break about the ice issue. I I, I don't understand because uh, how long these guys have been playing and how long they've been, how many different environments and how many different like ranks and how many different things. Like I, I'm sorry. I just don't buy the ice thing. I just don't buy it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it, you know, you, you, it's the, the ice turns to crap. If there's the worst is when there's a basketball game earlier in the day right, or when right. there's a concert the night before the ice just cannot recover in time. It's just sloppy. Yeah. Well, then like, both true. teams should have looked sloppy. Did both teams look sloppy? Sorry. That's, that, no, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. That that's a valid yeah. point. That the ice surface is bad for 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 everybody. Uh, but to but building on but for that the point, team. It, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's it, it's, it's, it's but, a real question to you guys. I don't know. I mean, well, it it and it's a legit. It it deserves a legit answer now. But building on Pat's point first is yeah, they're overall yes, there could be a, a better management of the ice. Unfortunately, Capital One Arena has a reputation, deservedly so, in being one of the worst at surface management. And until they start to get serious about that that that's going to be the knock on playing there. And, and the only thing I can think of is if they were better about that, how much better it would be for guys who can skate like a Kuznetsov, like a Milano guys like that, that you know, Strom, whose games are built on movement, skating and, mm-hmm. and getting in the right position. And well, it, is it, is it an ice recovery? And this is again, a real question. Is it an ice recovery issue or a logistics issue where they shouldn't be, putting concerts on the night before a game. It's probably, I would say it's, it's both. I don't think, yeah. I don't, you I didn't know, know this that is, there were other stadiums that could recover in like that quickly. Well, okay. So you know I'll give mean? you, I'll give you one, I'll give you one very quick specific. And this was, okay. I, and I'll qualify this by saying this was something I heard uh, probably 15 or 20 years ago that was in practice, but I heard somewhere that on average, that the 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 and and not all not all arenas not all NHL arenas actually use a zamboni. Some use a special other machine that this is patented or an Olympia. Or something else, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, what is or, this? Uh, but the the uh, the resurfacing machines, mainly zambonis, the blades that are used to help smooth out the surface 
Mm. Most arenas, most equipment teams only sharpen the blades on those machines anywhere from two to five times a season. Teams like teams in northern Canada, um, but specifically Edmonton and Calgary, I heard they sharpen the blades on their resurfacing machines something like two to three dozen times a season. Right. So that's why you always see that their ice, oh, yes, they're in, you know, double digit freezing temperatures half the season, granted, which helps, but they also have better management of, of their equipment. Now, I don't know what their scheduling is like as far as events, but as you can imagine, there's, you know, it's, we, it, the arena is shared with the Wizards. There's tons of a Georgetown basketball. There's other events going in and out of the place, all kinds of time. Uh, and sure. look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make any excuses for Ted Leonsis, uh, but he's got to make some money. And, you know, you don't just make sure. money by having hockey in one place. Uh, not that that excuses him, but it's just statement of fact. But I don't know. So I don't know if all of that answers your question, but that is, you know, that that's what it I does. see as far as speaking to you know, uh, the, the playing service. But you're right. Both teams have to deal with it. And, right. um, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it does become a thing that shouldn't be a thing already. Uh, given that it's January, but both teams do have to deal with it. Uh, it tends to be worse, of course, in play- places like Florida. But you know, I, you know, I, I won't get into that too much. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's a legit concern. And but this particular game, I, I think it wasn't really so much the ice that caused the problem. Was that you know exactly what Anna said? Happy. The approach. The they approach. Yeah, yeah. No, they thought that this was a uh, you know in the bag or whatever, and they just. Um, thought that they could, pun intended, skate through it, right? <laughs> like, I mean, so when you don't see, like, the energy you know is there coming out of them, and then you see a young, hungry team come into our town and do that, like, you got to give it to the Sabres. You, like, they they won that game. It's not that the Caps lost it. It's that they won it. Does that make sense? They out-energied oh, energy They out yeah. energyed them. The Sabers are it, it, it the Sabers are having a better season than they've had in, <laughs> I'd say, decades. Yeah. And yeah. Thompson is an absolute beast. Yeah. He he can't be underestimated. Oh no, there right. there is a reason. There's a reason, and a lot of eyebrows are raised when it happened. But there's a reason why he was signed to that long multi year contract. I was going to ask that next. How many years is he in in that that town? I think next year begins the contract, and it's seven years, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um, right. yeah. But it, oh, wow. it was it was a high multi-year contract. Now he hadn't he hadn't broken in you know, the numbers that he's getting now as yet. But obviously the management saw something, and they are right. They're proving to be right so far. <laughs> and if this this what we're seeing now is any indication to come, he'll he's you know, he's you know, going to set some records on, on his own team records at least, and, and certainly help the team. Now it would, uh, you know, they, they start getting some, you know, solid goaltending, solid defense. Yes, they have Rasmus Dahlin, uh, you know, but start putting some pieces around him. They're going to be a team to reckon with. They're probably going to be next year where New Jersey is now. Bottom line, Buffalo is going to be forced to reckon with, and they should not be underestimated. I'm not 100% sure they're going to make the playoffs. They'll challenge for a spot this season, but look out for this team is is, is all I'm saying. Um, yeah, now, in the next seven years. Yeah. Now, next, uh, the next game, of course, um, <laughs> uh, was was a, a road game uh, against the Blue Jackets. And I was pretty upset when I saw the start and it was another, yet another, um, yet another example of, of a slow schizophrenic start, uh, for, for this team. What's that? I was asking my husband if you watched that game, because I was at a, I'm coaching my daughter's basketball team. And I took some of the girls to see the local high school varsity girls basketball game that night just to coach them and show them what it's like to play at that level. She's, she's only in second grade. Um, So I didn't see that game. So I was just asking my husband if he saw it and he has, did you see it? Yeah, he watched it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, uh, right. So the, uh, 
they, they gave up the first goal uh, on a team that has a from a team that has a lot of trouble not only keeping the puck out of the net but scoring, and then they exploded for a four goal second because that's that's been their thing. Um, I should have mm-hmm. known. I should have seen that coming in that they would play down to their opponent the first period and then wake up in the second. That's exactly what happened here. Your goal scorers uh, for the Caps were uh, Oshi with a pair, Obe Kubel, Ferravari. Um, that's using your head. Hathaway and the captain with a power play goal at the end. 6-2 win for the Caps was this one. And, come on, uh, that, that I'll, I will say I, I will chuckle at the Ferravari joke. It was on the inside. It wasn't an outer chuckle kill, but that was, that was a good one. Okay, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're 2023, Anna Knox is going to find a joke or comment or pun <laughs> from Gil funny and actually laugh out loud. And right now was, it was on the inside because you know what? There was like when they replay that, I was like, oh God. That <laughs> resolution is going to go, gonna last Barry. all of 23. Yeah, till tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that that, yeah, re- yeah. that 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 resolution I'm sure will last all of 23 yeah. seconds. Mm, it, yeah, yeah, you're right. We know each other yeah. way too well, way too well. <laughs> uh, but sorry, sorry to cut you off. I didn't. No, 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 it's yet. fine. But Did, then so, this was Oshie's first game back with the pair. Mm-hmm. So hell yeah. So uh, what? So speaking of Oshi and well, and the rest of the team for that matter, I was kind of worried about how they how they shift him but uh what what did you i mean i'm sh- I'm sure you saw it anna what what did you think i did well i actually had the same oh my gosh look at now we're like agreeing from the from the get-go uh feel like that that first period they they really really sat back and when you have someone like a johnny hockey on the ice who is um going what 10 games without scoring and you know he's gonna do something um, and he did, and he scored first, and that sent that, you know, I was really hoping to see something from our team at first, but that's okay. I was glad to see Oshi back. We need Osh, babe, 100%. But I have a question for all listeners, and Becca, if you want to ask your husband, I'm not sure if um, we're on speaker or not. Um, you are, yeah. Okay, and if I – actually, I'll start with, with – um, Patrick, if that's okay, I want to know people's opinions on Obe Kubel because I have only truly been impressed with him the last two games, and he happened to have scored these last two games. There is something about this guy that I feel like you see on another team, I'd hate his guts. Um, but I just want to know what, what what vibe you guys are feeling with um, with this one. So, Patrick, I'm going to throw that question to you. Obe I'm- Kubel. What do you think? Cautiously optimistic. Impressed so far. Actually impressed, I'd say, over the last uh, six, eight weeks. Okay. That he's starting to make a name for himself. He's he's engaged. Um, I don't want to take it away from Oshi, though, because, yeah. What's that? Yeah, I was going to say, you don't think, like, his hothead tendencies are going to be more of a a problem going forward? Do you think he's going to be able to rein that in and – Stay out of the penalty box. I, I don't know. Not to change the subject, you think Hathaway can? What's going to happen uh, when was, Tommy? My, what's going to happen when Tommy so comes back tomorrow? Someone, no one has <laughs> stepped up to fill the Wilson gap. No. Yeah. Well, that's no, that's I, been the problem. That's been the problem all season. That's yeah. the Caps have essentially lost their identity because of that. And you're absolutely one hundred and fifty-seven percent by God right, Patrick. That is oh, been the wife. problem. <laughs> with, I, I, I mean, if, if if I were Bob Barker, I'd I'd be giving you a voucher to spin the wheel and, and tell you to have your pet spayed and neutered right now. But no. I mean, no. uh, if I may, if I may, I Go ahead. um I'm new. I'm new, I'm a new person here. I understand that. And Gil, I don't know you all that well, but that's a little much. Like I, I. I don't think the Caps have lost their identity. That's that's a huge, like in, in this woke transgender them they world. I don't think that they've lost their identity. I think I agree whole completely on the Wilson gap. I agree wholeheartedly on that. They need a they need a bully. They need somebody in there. And um, I don't. My husband has no opinion on the player that Anna, Anna mentioned. Um, okay. 
which means which means stand by like he's waiting to see that's what usually means like we'll Mm -hmm. we'll see we shall see you know what i mean talk about cautiously optimistic i think he's just cautiously waiting you know what i mean so i i think we need a hothead i think we need somebody who cares and has that energy um and can back it up so I think if, right. if, if, if so, if we have him in there and his hot headedness, and he oh, so I don't know how old the guy is, but if he matures a little bit with that same, uh, with those same instincts, then then the gap is filled as far as I'm concerned. Does that make right. sense? Well, so so just for Patrick and 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 Becca, because I know Gil, if you want to take a break and not listen to me talk about Tommy. <laughs> I totally I feel like get it. Still, still. Not... <laughs> well, I, 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 I actually, I have an answer. I, ha- I have an answer that's twofold, but okay. Uh, okay. Anna's, Anna's, I, I can feel Anna's going to make a, a great point here. So I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know if it's right. great, but no, 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 I, I'm going to say, so I've been a Tommy fan for a very long time since mm-hmm. him and Lotto were together and, and Michael Lotto is like one of my favorites and we don't need to talk about that because of the trade, but whatever. Um, what I have seen in Tom Wilson in the last two years is an incredible amount of maturity and leadership. Yeah. And so to see him not fight as much as I love his physicality, because he is no fucking show, um, mm-hmm. love to see it. I have been nothing but like, you know, golf clap applause to his restraint his when restraint. he's being yeah. Yeah. They're they're yeah. given they're poking the bear they know what to do, yeah. so in that kind of thing he's sort of you know morphed into so much more of a mature player. He wants to play long term. He wants yep. to be a leader and and get you know and I will take his minutes on ice versus minutes in in the sin bin a hundred percent. Hathaway yep. Patrick, I a hundred percent agree with you. Great player, great speed, also hothead. He needs to kind of rein it in. At times, I feel like his impulse control is not always in check. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. Obey yeah, Kubel. How many years has he been playing? He's been playing for, he's he's good. He's the late, God, I want to say, isn't Hathaway's, I want to say he's got to be 28, 29? He's 30. He'll be 30. He, he just, he's 31. 32. 32. Okay. Okay. 32. okay. And okay. Obey Kubel. 33. Oh. Like, I want to really be on board with this guy. So cautiously optimistic. I'm kind of feeling the same way. I don't, I can't, I don't have, I don't know. I, 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 I don't have the six week, um, you know, kind of gauge on him to be like, yes, he's coming there for some reason. When I picked the last two games, just cause he scored, not just because I, I was just happy with who, how he played, but I also noticed that, you know, a couple of those, those penalty, penalty minutes in the last game and last couple of games that we've gone over this week um, were because of him. So I'm like, ah, uh, so that's why I want to know. And so, so Gail, I know you said you're, you have a, a reply, but I, I just want to know, like, other than I kind of love saying Ove Kubel because it sounds like a, I don't know, a perfume, a drink, or something. Um, <laughs> it does I roll like off that. your tongue, Anna. It does. It does roll. It does. It sounds like you're saying like au revoir, bonjour. I, it doesn't it? Like uh, Ove yeah. Kubel. Like there's there's yeah. something a little sexy about that. There's but something behind your voice there. It's a little much. There is. There is. Uh, <laughs> a little, little something. something. Um, a little something. something. But I just don't know. Like I'm not putting him on my my Orloff Johansson um, list right now. Yeah, and that's where my, my my husband is at. Yeah, my husband. Yeah, is in the same I think the boat. potential he needs, is he needs there. To put in more but time. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all yeah. right, Gil. Sorry about that. Nope, no problem, no problem. So I'll, I'll try and quickly through uh, get through my explanation. Okay, so as far as well, Anna pretty much answered the first part. So the as, as, uh, your your objection to my saying that the Caps lost their identity. Well, mm-hmm. building on Anna's point, um, mm-hmm. they had no heavy hitter that could back it up. They yeah. had their no nobody out there who was willing to take the physical game to the other team. What were the Caps known for these past several seasons? What made them be able to 
play their game by forcing their will physically on the mm-hmm. other team, imposing their will physically on the other team. Oh. Love Hathaway. Love, love, love Hathaway. He's not that guy. All right. He's not big enough. Right. He's not big enough. Exactly. He's feisty enough. He's got hella spirit, but he's not that guy. Nobody has been that guy. And I think maybe, just maybe, by signing Connor Brown, they were hoping to get maybe TJ Oshi and Tom Wilson all in one package. Yeah. That didn't pan out. And I think Obey Kubel, to answer the second part of the question, was some management some attempt making some attempt to answer that missing portion of their game um of course his first game on the ice what does he do he completely overdoes it hits somebody in the head gets suspended and and sits out for a few games after that um quite a few um but as far as my so to end everything to finish the answer what is my overall impression well he's curious george and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Curious George. I think we're all old enough to know his stories. Who's the man in the yellow hat? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, Peter Laviolette? I don't know. Um, <laughs> McCarthy. But, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but uh, Curious George, what, what would he do? My Cute little monkey. Like <laughs> he's, he's, he's curious. He's curious about things. He wants to know how, to, how things work. He gets into things and then stuff goes to crap because he messes things up because he's curious. And and right, but if you gonna learn in time to stop that impulse control issue, that and right. and not like there's there shouldn't be a player that comes on this roster to say I'm gonna fill number forty three skates. It's not gonna happen. No, we need younger, faster, more skilled, smart hockey players or give six, you know, play 60 minutes, like as as a whole. We don't need someone who's gonna come in like Tommy because Tommy hasn't been fighting and doing Tommy for a long time. And I would rather see him score points. But Tommy, than, Tommy was you know, always drop, scoring. Drop in the glass. Tommy, he yes. became known as a, as a fighter, but the guy's got skill. And yes. you mentioned, you know, you mentioned leadership a few years ago. Um, uh, Joe B and Locker did a chalk talk for the season ticket holders, and they said Tommy was hired. He was brought to this team to be a future captain because he brought leadership with him from his previous experience. All right, exactly, yeah. exactly, and that's that's still another element that has been missing. Yes, Ovechkin is the captain, but there are other players that can step up and be the leader when he's yeah. not on the ice, and that's something else that they've been missing. But oh, she was my- the captain when he was with St. Louis. Well, that that's true. Yeah. That that's true, yeah. but unfortunately, Oshi also has been missing time, um, as as well. So I think that's that's been missing. But to finish my original point about Obe Kubel, um, he's curious, okay, George, in that he messes he messes things up, and then he makes them right with with either a great defensive play or, as he's done the last few games, a goal. Um, in in Nashville's case, we haven't gone on to that game, but uh, the the tying goal. In, mm-hmm. in the game against uh, Nashville. Um, but I don't know that that's enough to keep him in the lineup, given the fact that, and I'm, we're, we're already long on time, so unfortunately it's going to have to be a discussion for another day, but there's already roster changes moving on right as we're speaking. You know, already yeah. after, you know, before we started speaking, uh, changes are already afoot with this team that's going to require them to make some moves. And unfortunately, I think he's going to be a casualty of that. Um, I wish I could go to... Uh, um, related to the Curious George analogy. Okay. Um, <laughs> to pull the thread just a little bit more on that, but Curious George's books, he never does the same um, foul up twice. They're all different foul ups, right? So, which so is he doing the same thing? Is he messing up the same in the same way? Not no. exactly. Um, in the Columbus game, it was it was the giveaway. In uh, one of the other games, it was a bad penalty that he okay. took that he shouldn't have. And then, 
and then he gets motivated because he keeps exactly. getting himself. Exactly. Then he goes himself and he re- he rebounds. Yeah. Okay. Right. Then he goes into makes things better and corrects it and becomes something of the hero. That's why I made that, that's why I made that analogy. I like it. Maybe I like we it. should encourage early mistakes from number nine mistakes. <laughs> <That's laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe so, as long as they're not that costly. That is a secret. That's yeah. a secret yeah. to success is to is to make the mistake, make the big mistake, but make it early. Right. The, yeah. the secret to success is is learning from other people's mistakes. True. That too. <laughs> very, very true. So to get into our feature game uh, last night from the uh, the Predators, um, so that uh, we all saw it. It was it was a three two loss with a late goal that that kind of spoiled things. Uh, Nashville yeah. jumped out to a, a one nothing lead, and look, I, I'm going to preface this game by saying both teams. As I'm not sure if every, everybody was aware, but both teams were actually playing the back end of a back to back, which mm-hmm. means they had played the day before. So you're playing you're playing two games in 48 hours. That tends to take its toll on the body. So yeah. the, the, the thought is, OK, both teams are going to be tired. They're not going to be 100 percent. Well, the thing that I saw that I did not like was. Nashville looked a lot less of the two, like the out of these two teams that supposedly played less than 24 hours ago. They looked a lot fresher. They looked a lot more capable of carrying out a, a really gritty game, which this was, and a gritty game does not necessarily have to have, well, this, okay, so 60 hits total. Um, mm-hmm. that's yeah, probably a lot of hits that's where, okay. I would say that's above average for sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. not on the high, high end. I've seen games with, with 75 hits or more. Um, but yeah, that, that's definitely above average. Um, but they, they looked like they were doing everything they needed to do to keep the caps physically out of scoring position. Now, mm-hmm. Adding on to that point, the two goals that were gotten by both Milano at 9.52 of the first and okay. Obey Kubel at 11.07 of the second. How were they scored? Where were they scored? Literally, single-digit feet from the net. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Milano was parked on the right side of the net waiting for the rebound, which they really yeah. need to do more of. And, and why Milano has been a ray of sunshine. Good God, I'm full of references today. <laughs> uh, but seriously enough, um, you know, Milano seems to have that knack to put him in just the right place. And here he does it again. And then the Caps failed to do that largely because Nashville was willing to pay the price physically to keep the Caps out of those positions and force them to play a perimeter game. And when you do that to the Capitals, more often than not, they have great shooters, but nobody who can hit the net consistently. Not unless you yeah. got Ovechkin wide open on the power play, and even then. And Obey Kubel, his goal, he just decides, okay, he takes a pass from Gustafson, and he just decides, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go skating into the zone and walks around a guy who's not supposed to be playing defense in the first place, splits the defense, catches them napping for once. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure the coach gave them a talking to afterwards, but splits mm-hmm. the defense and then scores right in front of the net, right in front of the crease. So the two goals that the Caps actually got were going straight to the net. The rest of the game, they failed to do that. And so if, if you keep – you want to be a better fan – Keep your eye on something like that, where a team generates its scoring chances, and that'll tell you how the game is going to go. And, but also, you know, uh, going along with that, Gil, where you, I was happy when you when you say the, the yeah, cookie, and uh, Obey Kubel um, scoring how they scored is you know what I'll take that over any kind of overly fancy dance that koozie wants to do you know or you just want to be like just shoot the puck <laughs> just shoot the puck just do what you need to do and and do it now i'm not taking away from koozie i've always been a fan but i'm just saying it's like th- this was different this was you know this uh, do we need to you know continue this way i don't know will they continue this way i don't know but i'm just you know with you saying it um 
in that format, it's just like, wouldn't you rather see the two goals versus, oh, we had a chance, but we were, you know, trying to be fancy and tricky and, and all this other kind of stuff. So, you know, no, no, I, no, no. I think you're right, the- you're, you're right, Anna. You are absolutely right. I want to see them score more of the gritty goal. And I'll just leave yeah. it at that. I think well, they're they're passing to- they're passing over the last few months has gotten a lot better. But yeah. last night the the passing was good, but damn uh, Nashville had their number. Yeah, they did. And it's not like they were swarming us. They just knew they they broke everything up. Uh and we just had no luck getting getting in the right position. Um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you know. all the, the thoughts, I, but I mean, I think my husband just said it kind of at the beginning of this uh, really well when, Gil, you were mentioning it, so they, they both played back-to-back games. The Caps are old, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and they cannot recover at the same pace as a young team like like Nashville. So that's sort of my two cents. But. I don't know. Our, to- our top three guys on zero days rest currently are Ovechkin and Strong. Ovechkin and Strom, Kuzi had had a better record last year for zero yeah. days rest. This year, he's I think he's fourth or fifth. Yeah, but but it's true. And, 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 and all I, three I, of those guys failed to uh, make me money on my on my bets last night. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got the Kuzi point and and I got an Oshi point, but yeah, uh, well, no, I, I hear yeah, something else I we're going to have to discuss later. For... <laughs> I don't want to blame the players for Pat betting. That's on you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's on me. It's called a bet. It's called a bet for a reason. Yeah. There but you the, go. Da- the data didn't support what happened last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no. And, but one, <laughs> one last point, one last point. Um, yes. Uh, the caps are an older team and no, they're not, you know, the, they're not as adept at recovering, but uh, you know, I, it's all about, uh, to me, this it was all about. Athletes. Well, it's it's not just that. It it's all about imposing your will and and wi- being willing to play that physical enough game to create the space to give yourself a chance to score. And like Pat just said, though, it just seemed like between it was it was sort of a cross between the Caps did not muster enough of an effort to do that, and when they did. Nashville knew exactly how to shut it down, except yeah. for two times during the game. Well, I think so, it goes back. So I think it goes back to something Anna said earlier, which is that they need to play smarter. If they can't play harder, they need to play smarter. And if they're not going to do that, then they're going to lose the game. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's that's probably that's probably what led to the the game winning goal. I don't. It it yeah. It was it was a great pass to be sure from yeah. Ryan Johansson, uh, brother of Lucas, if anybody's curious that that's mm-hmm. Lucas's older brother. That's uh, cool. but, but it's, uh, yeah, it was a great touch pass by him to, of all people, Ryan McDonough. Oh, I hate, how do you let a guy <laughs> like Ryan McDonough look like freaking Connor McJesus, David and yeah. skate in like that <laughs> past your uh, defense and score a goal like that? I would have more respect if it was uh, anybody other than McDonough. Can't stand the guy. Never have. Never will. Rangers, Tampa yeah. Bay, whatever it is. I he's he's not quite on the Ryan Reeves list, but he's not far from it. So I, it Got sucked. It. it sucked to learn, to lose this game with with that being the only goal in the third period. Brutal. Yeah. Sucked. Yeah, and it was it it was again it was kind of like they were playing a twenty minute overtime if you think about it that one mistake is going to yeah. lose it and there it was and yeah, yeah and it was in the last like thirty seconds wasn't it no or, it was four minutes no, left oh, yeah yeah sixteen forty four of the third um so okay. about uh, just over three minutes left to play. Um, Caps had an uh, they they pulled the they pulled Lindgren for the extra attacker, and they I don't know, I don't know if they really got anything in the way of of evening a even a threatening chance when they did. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> they didn't. didn't. It didn't. Yeah. It, it, since if if I didn't yeah. remember it, then it didn't happen. So so yeah, no, it didn't happen, and yeah, it was. 
Yeah, it was like I said, at 20 minute overtime, they made the one mistake just enough to lose it. And unfortunately, it happened in regulation. So they didn't come away with the point. It bothered me because there it's it's too easy to make the excuse that um, oh, it's a back-to-back. Oh, they're an older roster. Oh, they're uh, you know, some guys didn't didn't put out the effort they needed. That's that's become too easy of an excuse for me. You you gotta you gotta do what you can to win games. Yes, they are within a playoff position right now, but you've got to start building. You you've got to keep banking and building the standings points to wit. As we discussed last week, the schedule on paper is supposedly getting easier. So here's the preview of at least next next week's attractions. Now, these games are nicely spaced out for once. So tomorrow evening at 5, when we would normally be recording, as I mentioned earlier, uh, back at home at Cap 1, uh, it's a CBJ we're hosting. Um, so pencil that as a win, maybe. Um, oh, middle of the week, Wednesday, it's trip up to Philly against the Flyers. Um, They're a lot tougher, maybe not pencil that as a win, but 7 o'clock start for that one. Then back at home for a return match with Philly on Saturday at Cap 1, 7 o'clock. So those are the three games for next week. Uh, And then kind of an up and down schedule a week after that. Islanders, Minnesota, Arizona, and Vegas. uh, The start of a a Western trip at the tail end of next week. A couple of games that should be wins, a couple of games that might be a lot tougher. So kind of a yin yang kind of scenario there, but that that's what they're looking at. And, but again, some of those games, I can't see the caps coming away with less than two points and they ought to because Philly's getting stronger. Buffalo is going to be a spoiler. There's going to be a lot of teams they have to watch out for. And I would rather not be in a wild card situation like like last season yeah um but it's it's gonna be hard to see what plays out and we got to get used to some line changes again and that yeah yeah, and that's that's uh yeah that's too right patrick too right because unfortunately that's going to have to be a discussion for another day um because uh i mean we could sit here all evening and, and figure out you know what kind of puzzle Brian McClellan and Peter Laviolette are going to put together here, but uh, if, by the time of this recording, hopefully you've heard by now, Joe Snively has been uh, put on waivers, um, and Alexei Protus has been loaned Protus. back to Hershey uh, at Which this time. Kind of expected. Yeah. Both both expected moves, and I am sure there are more moves to come. Yeah, no, I've honestly, I, I saw Protus before, Snively. I, I, I don't know how I like Joe. Like, I like the local boy. I think he's, and he's got the drive. Protus, I don't know. I was pulling for him. Um, Gil, I think you always said he's so hesitant. I'm starting to see that a little bit more. I, I'm not going to, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to waste any time with my evaluation of Protus. No, I've said no, what no, I've no. said about him. Snively, I would not be surprised if he gets picked up. Um, and in fact, um, yeah, I, I would put money on, on Snively being picked up. Uh, I'm sure yeah. somebody somewhere can use a scrappy forward that, uh, has no <laughs> fear of going to the net. Um, yeah. He's awesome. You can never have a but, shortage of that. So uh, he's going to get picked up somewhere. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, that is that pretty much winds up the uh, the on ice portion of of what we can expect. Um, I think we can expect a pretty good week. Uh, Philly's going to be a tough out, but I think out of those two games, uh, definitely should bank two to three points for sure from both of them. Um, they're getting some guys back, but they don't quite have uh, the on-ice skill to match up with the Caps. So as as far as outscoring, I think the Caps have their their number, and, and their, their goaltending hasn't been as consistent. So I think on those two fronts, we can expect a lot. The Blue Jackets are the Blue Jackets. You know, um, Elvis hopefully will be in the building Sunday. Um <laughs> Hey. And uh, as much as I love Elvis, um, we, we seem to have, have gotten his number. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll send, hopefully okay. send him to blue Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, 
Yeah. I don't get that in the building reference. Elvis never... is the goalie's name. Oh, got it. Uh, the, right. So the goalie for the Blue Jackets, his name is Elvis Merzlikens. Okay. Cool. Oh, one one of them anyway. I I don't know I don't know if he'll start, but they're they were they're actually uh they played today and Corpusalo Jonas Corpusalo started for them today, so I'm sure it will be Elvis. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. Like My niece's okay. name is Presley. Oh, nice. <laughs> After Elvis. Aww. Yeah, cool. Kinda. Uh, so uh, that endeth the on ice portion of uh, the the discussion, and uh, like I said, hopefully the Caps uh, bank some serious points next week because I think they're going to need them because they're only play, playing three games and some teams are going to catch up uh, on the in hand games. Let's wind that up and go to uh, the next segment, which is as I promised the uh, the local uh, business uh, spotlight which I promised that we were going to be doing for the uh, the remainder of the 2023 season. And if you're listening to this for the first time, wondering what the heck I'm talking about, um, I'm making it my business to cover uh, any business, uh, be it in the, well, hopefully in the, in the DMV or anywhere for that matter, uh, that is either starting out or has, has been around for a while and uh, deserve some, uh, some love, some uh, uh, lip service and love and, uh, uh, the light being shined on them and, um, you know, maybe not, maybe not drum up some business, uh, thanks to our little podcast, but, you know, just g- give them some much needed attention and uh, start to get the word of mouth going at the very least. And so conveniently enough this week, um, we are having, uh, Mr. Patrick Kirchner on with us to plug his business and, uh, Pat, I'm going to let you take it away and uh, tell uh, the whole podcasting world what it is that you do and provide. Well, what I do is uh, I sit in a small padded room and I talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like what I do a lot. Are you hiring? <laughs> um, I, am a, uh, I did 31 years in the Marine Corps. And when I retired from that, my wife encouraged me to pursue what I had talked about uh, all my life, which was go into voiceover and become a voice actor. So did my, did my homework. Um, thankfully she has supported me along the way. And, uh, I'm in my sixth year, um, of doing that. And basically I, uh, I tell other people's stories and hopefully make them listenable. So, um, got a few audio books under my belt, mostly, uh, e-learning corporate explainers, um, podcasts, live announce uh what am i missing got the e-learning got the corporate audiobooks uh did one animation pilot still waiting to hear that get picked up that would be uh that would be a lot of fun to get that nice. box checked in um yeah and so i've uh, i've actually only been in a physical studio thanks to covid uh, only been in the physical studio a couple of times, but everything is is done right out of my booth in the basement um, with uh, thanks to a, a little product called Source Connect. I can uh, I can tap into a uh, to an audio engineer remotely and it's it's real time and full uh, full broadcast quality sound. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Absolutely. And OK, so oh, let's plug the website. <laughs> Go How right do you ahead. get a hold of me? Yeah. Um, well, you can find me on social media either at sound underscore attention because some guy in China or Japan took sound attention like a week before I was going to nab it for my Instagram. <laughs> um, LinkedIn is sound attention, one word, and the website is soundattention.com. And you can reach me at pat at soundattention.com. Excellent. And so were you, I'm sure, I'm sure you were aware, Pat, but uh, Wes Johnson, the, uh, the public address announcer, Capital One. I've coached uh, with Wes. For the, yeah. for the Caps? Oh, oh yeah. so you've, you actually work with him. Uh, I've coached with him. Uh, he, he teaches a great class on uh, video game characters. And, and Wes is, uh, uh, you know, he is not, uh, he is not that big giant voice that you hear on the PA. He is actually a very nice, very funny, very mm-hmm. soft-spoken 
uh, soft-spoken man when he's not on. When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he is just the nicest, just the nicest guy. And he's a hell of an actor. Because this, this whole Mag job. Fest right now. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, he's doing MagFest right now. Yeah. Um, this job is, is about 5% voice, 95% acting, and another 50% running the small business. So, so people go, oh, I, I, I've got a great voice. My mom says I have a great voice and, uh, <laughs> and I like to read. I should do audio books. Um, well, you get disabused of that notion pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, what, what would you say to somebody that uh, ha has those thoughts? Yeah. Um, what I do <laughs> when I get those, when I get those calls, and now I understand why Wes, why Wes did it to me. Um, Cause I told him, God, maybe 10 years ago. Hey man, when I get out of the Marine Corps, I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of of getting started in voiceover. Can I buy you a cup of coffee and bend your ear? And he's like, Yeah, whatever. So, <laughs> which means go pursue it on your own. So it, after about a year and a half of doing this, I wrote three articles and put them on my LinkedIn. And so anytime someone calls me and says, Hey, I'm thinking about voiceover. Can I can I call you? I'll say absolutely. Read these three articles. And when you're done with them, call me and I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you for any questions you have. And, and those three articles um, are probably enough to scare the hell out of anybody who just wants to be a toe dipper. Because this is, the business is not for the faint of heart. Um, it, takes, it takes a lot of work. There's a lot of rejection that you have to get past. You know, I probably did... Um, um, Probably do at least a hundred auditions a month, and you're hoping to book one or two out of that. You always want to get that percentage down, but you know you get a script, you interpret the script, you record the uh, record the sample. If it's from one of my agents, you record the full thing. You know, yesterday I had one that was um, probably a good five minutes total because it had a bunch of different characters and a bunch of different scripts, and you got to do all of them. Um, you know, and, and put the hard work into trying to figure out what they, what the copywriter was trying to say, and what he's trying to communicate. And, you know, that's where the, that's where the education and training piece of, of voiceover comes in. A lot of coaching, a lot of uh, improv, acting, acting classes, what, dialect classes. Um, yeah, it's a big investment. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. It, it, I, I would imagine software and equipment alone, um, if you want to, so I've heard anyway, if you, if, if you want to really make the, uh, an impression, um, you know, if you're really serious anyway, it probably would, would set you back. A good microphone would be the best, best start. I would imagine I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, I mean, I, obviously I'm, I'm kind of a, a you know, a, a glorified ham radio artist in, in that regard. So I, I don't claim, you know, I don't claim to know the ins and outs. So I'm, I'm glad, uh, you know, cause I've, I've been asked, well, how did you get started podcasting? And is it real, real hard to do? No, it's not hard to do, but you know, like you, the thing I tell everybody is don't expect to you know, have 50 gajillion downloads overnight. And, yeah. and, you know, cause it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So uh, in that sense, yeah, I, I can totally understand where you're coming from. Um, but, um, and you yeah, don't I, need a, you don't need a thousand dollar microphone. Um, your mm -hmm. space, your space is actually more important than, than the, how much you spent on the microphone. You right. know, if you got a well-treated space, um, you know, 200, $250, uh, uh, CAD, you know, Ecotech CAD E100S or a Stellar X2, they'll, they're fine to get you started. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you want, um, you want to be booking a Super Bowl commercial, then you probably yeah. need to be on a, on a, on a Neumann U87 or a, a TLM or, uh, or a Sennheiser 416 mm -hmm. to do those things. Yeah. I, I probably I, I i can hear i can hear uh, uh some uh, i can literally hear some heads spinning because i i'm familiar <laughs> with those models uh, but uh, some of our listeners may be like what in the hell are these people talking about uh, but yeah, me, me well, being a me being a techie and and doing this yeah i know 100 percent exactly what you're talking about. i i fell in love with the i was at a conference in november here in uh there's the mid-atlantic voiceover conference happens here 
Um, used to be every other year, but we're trying to catch up and do it every year. Um, but the Neumann guy was there and I did, uh, I did my first mic shootout where I had all the microphones lined up and I was able to go and, and talk into each of them and listen to it and hear it. I just fell in love with the U87, but that's a, that's a $3,000 mic. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I need to book, I need to book a good national campaign to, uh, to pay yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, I'm just, well, uh, Pat, what ahead. was that? Go ahead. Becca. Can you, sorry, Pat, can you share anything you've done? Uh, can I share anything I'm done? Uh, I think I'm still the voice of recruiting for Delta airlines for, oh, um, nice for for hiring their um gate agents uh hmm. let's see just had a a run that i think just finished for better place forests which is uh which is really beautiful concept that you're not going to take up space in a uh in a cemetery somewhere they're gonna they're gonna cremate you and then your ashes are going to go at the base of a tree in a national forest and when your family oh. goes to visit you they're walking through the forest i want to do that's that. really cool yeah yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, uh, you look at, you got 8 billion people on this planet. We ain't got enough real estate to. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. information is like, is also bad for the environment to, technically and that everybody should just be having a natural burial, but that's going to creep everybody out. So we can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I, I tell you what, uh, Pat, uh, Message me uh, all of those links and uh, as, as soon as you can. And uh, what, what I like to do is uh, within the show notes of the podcast, anything uh, that, that'll redirect uh, the listeners once, once they do the download to your business, uh, like to post those in the show notes um, as, as well. And uh, probably even post them on, on the Facebook page as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely want to plug that. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's why we're here. Um, but yeah, as, as you folks can hear, um, I don't think, uh, you'll be, uh, disappointed if, uh, you decide to, uh, take Mr. Kirchner on, uh, to, to plug, uh, whatever it is that, uh, you need voiceover, uh, work done for. Everybody needs uh, voiceover. <clears throat> Every, everybody does. Me to, including me. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll definitely see. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're getting long in time, unfortunately. And uh, although I look, it's it's been an absolute pleasure for everyone here. Uh, for, well, for me, at least I, don't, I, I can't speak for you guys. I, I, I hope you had a, a great time, but I, I've had I've had fun. I love doing it. Uh, the show when we've got, uh, you know, at least one other person other than Anna and myself. So this this has been absolutely a blast for me. Uh, so Becca Fantastic. and Pat, thank you, thank you both for uh, coming on and uh, burning the early part of a Saturday evening. I'm sure uh, probably a million other things you could have been doing, but uh, you you decided to spend it with us. But uh, thank you both for coming on and and giving us your your thoughts about the caps. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot, thank a lot you. of fun. Yeah, thank you so much, Gil, Anna, Becca. Uh, great show. Loved talking to you, and yeah. uh, look forward to hearing it. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, Have a, yeah, no, thank you guys for your time. We really appreciate it. And, um, as Pat, we always say, go cats. Let me know when you're out of town for a home game, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. Okay. So, uh, yep. This is definitely a good place to stop. So, uh, for both Becca and Mr. Pat Kirshner and of course the mermaid, this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off for another episode of the Power Play Point podcast and reminding you that if you see something gray and not important, well, it's an irrelevant. Oh, my no. God. Oh, God. See, thank you, Patrick. Ooh. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. And let's go, Caps. <laughs> Let's go Caps! Let's go Caps! Let's go Caps! This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcast, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. Go 
Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Power Play Point Podcast. Thanks for listening.